It's one of the biggest police operations of the year and it's more than just a game. It's B6 versus B9, Villa Blues, and this is how you police it. More than 400 police officers are on duty for the 127th Second City Derby, a fixture that notoriously brings trouble. Now, you will notice that I'm wearing a hat. It is a hard hat. The last meeting between these two sides at St Andrews, 44 arrests and lots and lots of things thrown at police officers. Talk us through that one because, I mean, this hat will protect me, but scaffolding brackets? Yeah, scaffolding brackets, uh, there, was, there was a number of those recovered. I mean, they're, they're an incredibly heavy, agile piece of... Uh, piece of missile that were, that were thrown at officers, uh, bits of masonry. You know, we, we, we train for such occurrences, but I'm glad to say we don't see it very often. Uh, when we do, then we've got protective equipment, we've got shields, we've got visors on our hats, uh, we've got protective pads underneath our clothing, and um, there was a number of convictions from that, and uh, a lot of uh, post-match investigation of over 140 offences. <laughs> Ordinarily at football matches, we see people with big riot helmets on and riot gear on, but today I've seen baseball caps and, yeah. well, batons. Yeah, DIY safety goggles as well. Um, it's, a, it's a change in the, uh, the perception of the way that we police these games. So we wear enhanced um, protection for a, a level two or level one game. So we would have um, lower leg guards on, knee guards on, thigh guards on. We'd have a box on. We'd have... Um, protective gear on our shoulders and on our arms obviously we've got our um, ballistic vests on as well so we'd have an enhanced level of protection police spotters monitored risk supporters all day to prevent any major disorder both sets of supporters come together in the 21st minute to remember those lost in the birmingham pub bombings a reminder that even on derby day some things are more important you've seen today that 42,000 people have come and had a fabulous day enjoyed the, the football uh, there's been hardly any trouble. We've dealt with it where there has been. We've only need, needed to make four arrests around the ground. And I think most of the people um, are now used to the model that they see, they come, they know where to go. And all of my officers have a very uh, passionate brief from me at the beginning of the day to engage with the public, to help them know where they're going to go, you know, have a bit of banter with them. There's lots online and social media telling them which trains to catch and all that kind of stuff. And we, it's the club's event, but we do all we can to support them and the community have a really productive and positive day and I think everyone's enjoyed it. Now as it stands we're at the back of the whole turn, the second half's underway, the Villa are leading three goals to one. Now in theory that's probably making your job after the game a little bit easier knowing that they're going to be what 40 odd thousand Villa fans coming out in a good mood. Yeah I mean it, it, no matter how much we plan and, and this, this event's been months and months in the planning the, the result, the weather, the league position they have a huge impact on the after match, what we would call phase three postings. So one team, it matters not if it's home or away. If there's if there's a if there's a good bit of light between the two between the two score lines, then one team leave, one team leaves happier. We had supporters in our operation in the planning and there today. So there were supporters from both clubs that were on the ground with the officers, helping to give feedback. Say why is that happening? Why is that happening? They saw all the plans beforehand. There was some of them in the control room with me um, and that's a massively important part of it because these are well-known supporters that is a way of, you know, you can't go out and speak to 40,000 people individually but this is a good kind of feedback loop for us. And each time we've done a fixture they've come and we've invited all the transparent kind of feedback they can possibly give us and that genuinely has been really instructive. It's helped us to fine-tune different things, get our message right. Uh, what we often see is, is away teams, if, they're, if they are suffering uh, on the pitch, will leave early. Um, we're not going to get that in a local derby. They'll, they'll both stay to the end. But as you say, the majority will be happy with the, with the scoreline. You can probably hear the whole tend in the background there. Villa fans in good voice. What are we going to be doing after the match? Well, we'll be returning to the city centre and we'll meet the special trains as they arrive back into Birmingham city centre and make sure that the pubs and uh, entertainment district of the city centre uh, are free from any uh, disorder. We make sure that any, any groups don't come together. There'll be um, resources between us and the ground. They'll be doing the same at, at the home pubs and there'll be groups, uh, there'll be other resources that'll be working into the night to make sure that the nighttime economy doesn't suffer any football related disorder.